Gee, he's coming. He's lagging. Hey, Chris. Chris? Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. I see. I'll just put a moment there. Good to see you. Good They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months. Blood just goes and just, uh, blood's pretty much everything off and all that. So. I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, key uh, last time? Okay. They have, like, a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like, go past the stubble and just kind of. Let's do the best you can, huh? Just got to. That. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. How about you guys? Good. Okay. Good. I did. I did not expect to see this. That's for sure. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let me put some fear aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. Um, well, no, they they didn't know what this this is a computer room. I was like, I didn't know how to computer room. <laughs> uh, without computers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you remember? Um, I talked to you. Tammy talked to you. Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you was a different situation, right? Uh, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore, right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of trouble at all. Um, and so that's, I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. Um, but why we are here. So, um, so the three of us were from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick, different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on, since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? And me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey, Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple of months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never, ever worked a case like this where someone told me that, ever. Um, you know, and so as I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so in talking with Tammy and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? Um, so when we saw you last, we were talking and talking and talking um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened, and we understand why that happened, but it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. Um, and then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but, um, and so that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know. Um, I think there's a lot of things that you didn't get to talk about, um, and so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? No, not one. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Shanann's family, mm -hmm. um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him some things for him? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so, really, that's why we're here. Are you available to talk to us? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Um, so, off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that you don't want to talk about, that's okay. Um, wouldn't that press you a little bit? Okay, you might say, 
Well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us. Um, if we need to take any bathroom breaks, we can take bathroom breaks. Uh, and, you know, for anything like that. And we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM. Okay. It's oh. yeah, they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. just in case. That's just what they do. Okay, I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things or something like. Yeah. I think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. Oh, okay. accounted for. Yeah, I think. Eleven thirty. Yeah, lunch is like eleven. What they're counting for? Eleven fifteen. So. Yeah. So in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Is That's it? Good or bad? That's better, I think, because I mean, it's here. I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like I was segregated, and it was just like counting all the walls all night, screaming, and just so mm -hmm. was from I mean, other people. Oh, really? Yeah. I they're just telling me like how I should kill myself and like what they're gonna do to me and just like all that kind of stuff. So oh, it was today this this is a lot different because I mean people here don't seem to it's not like they don't care, but it's just kinda like they they don't take they don't like judge you as soon as you walk in. The car it was like they they knew why I was there and they just that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like they just they had one second along with me, it would have been really they were, yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Must be out then. Out of out of like what kind of jail? I don't know how what it was like in you know DOC there, but you know like they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow, it, it will. Mm -hmm. So they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez, wow. like I couldn't. I didn't see anybody else there. Like I was, I was still next to somebody, but like I never saw them. You just hear them. <laughs> I didn't know who you were. Um, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just um, they they make phone calls in there too. Oh, okay. and they got the newspaper in there before I got in that got in there. So yeah, I was. Uh, have you been able to talk with family? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. we get uh, from six p.m. to seven thirty. That's our our our. I might even time out, so we get to use the phone at that point. Time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it or? Oh, it's just like oh, it's like secures or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put uh, money on the phone. Oh. So if I call, like, if I was, like, to dial somebody's number, they have to have, like, a phone account set up. Oh, so I just said restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh, okay. Have you been able to talk to, like, family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay. Good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Definitely. Yeah, yeah they, they don't hear from me. They're like, oh, what's wrong? What's going oh, on? good. Yeah. And how is it with them? And so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were gonna say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and so yeah, I really appreciated what they said. I don't know about you. I definitely was. Uh, I didn't expect them to be there. So I know they were there on the sixth when I'm sick, but I didn't expect them to fly back, and oh. they wanted to fly back for that. So. Yeah, and then while we were all said, that's right. Good. Um, well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start or do you, do you have any questions for us? Go ahead. We'll start. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is, um, and I don't, I should, I won't make any assumptions today. So are you aware that this was a national story? After, after a little while, it was, uh, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Cause I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no of nothing yeah, right. so like i made i made one phone call when i was in the segregation area there but my dad didn't thought it was like somewhat like a news oh so, I turned the call. so he didn't answer yeah so he didn't answer but other than that okay i didn't talk to anybody but from what the some of the deputies are saying that you know for my attorney team coming in and say you know this is like they've got people from australia england and all kinds of people trying to so, uh, so did they send you any did, did you any of the letters like fan mail or anything well um i got letters but couldn't keep them like it with me so like i could read them like a mile hour out but it's like you know i got a bunch of letters that had no return address you know, oh. stuff that was just you no know, not, not very good letters yeah so okay they came from a weird perspective didn't they from what we have heard Definitely. There was, there was one person, I guess, from Broomfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me. And then there was just a lot of people like writing that was like 
wait through markers saying, you know, like you're a monster, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, well, I don't, we're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, um, what happened with your family. So that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine, right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. Um, and so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is um, we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters, um, a lot of interest. And then us personally as law enforcement, we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Um, had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, while well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent? Yeah, Trent. that guy, that, that, that blew my mind. I was like, Hello, this guy. And who told you about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we talk, talk about him? Yes. <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> Do you have to? Yes. We'll waste our lives. Yes. So Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear. Not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. Um, and if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way, you know. So um, if it's true, I hope that you can just casually say, yeah, I mean, this happened. It wasn't as bad as he said, but maybe this happened. So his story was um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe men. And so he said, met a couple times met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and then that was basically it. Any of that sound familiar? Okay. No, I never got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a, your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards, so. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. I never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven up there to see someone. Yeah. Um, and so this is maybe a weird question for you. And, and, uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Any interest? No. Okay. Never had a time, experimented, wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, he to found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never got me. He had my phone. So, okay. I mean, you, could probably, yeah. you could probably saw what app I had, but I've never even heard of the app. But okay. apparently, like he told me, like, uh, I met him do like a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, that was another guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was totally. I no. So did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay, He's like well, this guy, and he was John was kind of, you know, making fun. Like, do you know him? Sure. Broke him, like, you know. So you saw it, and you were like, no way. Yeah, was, Big lips. Did you see the mm -hmm. giant lips? Yeah, and... Like, I have no clue. <laughs> and he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember. Um, he's he's he was kind of meek. Yeah. But also a little bit um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, he did fake lip, or not fake lips, but injections. Uh -huh. He was very into skincare and makeup. Um, and he mentioned that one of the times, just as a gift, you got him some skincare products. Mm -hmm. that any of that sound familiar? No. Okay. You can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with. Okay, so that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Bolts. There was another gal that you were dealing with. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Okay. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah, he, uh, he had like. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I, uh, it's that look, that look familiar? That's the same picture he showed me on the okay. and my soul. And I was, I was looking, I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said it was like a Chick fil A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. That's and that's just not true. That's what she's no. claiming. Okay. Um, well, I wanted one Chick fil A in Colorado, the other one in. Broomfield, Highway 7. Okay. Oh, that's it. Okay. Do um, you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just a cold. Okay. Yes. And that was it. Uh, okay. um, as these people have come out, for the most part, we've not given their stories much credit. 
they're just crazy people who want attention. Um, and so, but when that does happen, it does make us think, um, you know, there may have been others. And so Nicole was the only one. That was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? Oh, okay. All right. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about Nicole? So walk me through it, because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right, so, we didn't talk about it. Kind of and, you know, yeah. talked about where the girls were, but so what happened there? So it was probably around probably June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. And uh, it was just like a work conversation. I actually messed with the gas meters that, you know, were out in the field. And I'm out messing up, and then you know, I took a door like, hey, you know, I, what's going on with this? Like, I don't fix it, and, you know. After that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office and I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me, cause like when I, when we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like we moved here from Colorado or from North Carolina and stuff like that. And then uh, she was like, what's all this weed stuff? Because I'm like, oh, I took up my phone and showed her a picture. Like, well, my girl's on the phone. It's like, oh, okay. Like, so, like, yeah, like, you know, I don't wear, I didn't wear a ring at work because like, I sent off so I get refitted when I lost all that weight. So, but, um, you lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight. Yeah, it was literally like I was out in the snow one time. I went like that, ring went off on the rocks. So I was just, like, I was panicking trying to find out that I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> but, um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days and she texted me outside the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth. And it was just, you know, just like, you know, like she used to work in a little rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of shredding the stories back and forth about what we did and everything. And then one day it just kind of went to a different, different level. And then I never thought it would ever go to that level. But she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. That, that, uh, yeah, San Diego from the 20s second to the 26th of June and uh we met up after after we got after we got back and uh how did you guys meet up uh at a fork in uh Thornton at, yeah at Fort somewhere um and after that we just kept seeing each other pretty much the whole month of July so let me ask you this um you tell me if I'm wrong you strike me as somewhat of a shy person so when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first. Okay. From both sides. Yeah. They were just kind of like feeling each other out. It's kind of like, I don't I mean, Yeah. Um, and so texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just blurring. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Um, cause the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, you know, I wish I was on the field more so I'd be the office to lose that month, but yeah. 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 I kind of see it in your eyes. <laughs> so. That's kind of where the path started. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because when I was the field, when I went from a, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're going to go, everything like that. And, you know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. and instead of like coming to the office like for well, more than an hour. Right. That just gave me more time to run into her pretty much. Yeah. yeah. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married at first? She did. Once I showed her the pictures yeah. on the phone, yeah. I'm like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. So was your wife in that picture or was it just your phone? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the, like the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married with my kids. Yeah. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? Yeah, what did you think about that? I figured it was like, just trying to save face, trying to, you know, I was just trying to, and some of my sister said it was like, uh, just trying to keep things together. You yeah. Know, just trying to, she, she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like, uh, just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her. Cause I'm sure she got bombarded by 
all kinds of different sites from the media and everything. So, and have you talked to her at all? No. No. I'm I hoping don't. she hasn't like you know written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Uh, right, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope not. Okay. No one's told you that then. No, I mean I would I would expect like. Uh, I, I thought like Colorado had said like on a DOC list of if you're on a, like a victim list you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here I'm not sure if that's the same. Well, I just talked to my sister, parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to just get some closure. Just to say like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through, like, if you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, different state, if you had to leave everything behind. I just wanted to let you know, I'm sorry. That something I never saw in my life happening or happening to somebody else could do. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. Do you want her to? Do you want us not to? And if she would want to even talk to you, I'm not sure if you so, I'm sure she answered your phone call more than the attorney phone call that she didn't want to call. Answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that, they figured out, I guess, where she lived. And they left a call, but business card there. And she just, pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said, she said, stop. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else, so. Hopefully it's calmed down since, but, but uh, I'm sure, like, I just hope she can, like, move, like, I'm like, there's, like, more, we'll see for her, not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm mean, sure we, that would have been hard if she did. Mm-hmm. Tend to win a darker was in dream job, so uh, that's one thing I always like asked. My attorneys was like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Where is she? Oh, uh, like the get up, like an old company in the dark. I was like, you know, I mean, unless you work with, like BP or like a company or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. In the dark, I was like, in you know, looks like big leagues. Yeah. Right. Can I ask kind of a mm -hmm. tough question? Yeah. Um, did you love her? That felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Okay. Um, tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think like when you said like more, more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I've never like been pursued by anybody before it was kind of like i was the one you know trying to pursue because like when me and shenan met it was like you know she was always like pushing me away kind of like you know she was sick for a while right oh yeah she had yeah she was uh she had just got diagnosed with lupus and she was on like a bunch of different medication and stuff and um it was like i guess i was one of her type and you weren't her type. I, I wasn't her type because like she 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 told me like when I, when, I, when she first because we had met she told you that yeah, <laughs> you're not yeah. I remember you telling me that <laughs> yeah, it was like you know when we first met like was at a movie theater and my uh, cousin's ex wife set us up you were dressed like shit weren't you <laughs> I didn't I, I think didn't, that's what you told me yeah I didn't know like that we were, we were, we were, we have any games so she was fancy she, she was in like shorts and was, tennis shoes or something right. <laughs> I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit. And I was just like, <laughs> this isn't good. I like when you have the theater. It was a fancy theater, right? Yeah, it was Kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter. And apparently, it, they give you like champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. yeah. I think he came, I think he came like he was going to a like I was, Cinemax. I was like, like, uh, <laughs> like I was going to a podcast. Like AMC. <laughs> like a theater. No, it was like, like you like most watch the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like, you know, a Jack and Coke beside the theater and just yeah. sit there and whatever. But like, uh, yeah, it's when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk, talk to the bartender a little more. <laughs> no, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not here to meet. But yeah, like it was, I was like persistent trying to pursue something. I liked her, and uh, 
even, even like even on the first day, like I couldn't even eat anything really. I was just like, you know, just so nervous. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. I was just, she was just like, you know, chowed down. And she was like, you eat like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's not oh, it. And she taught my parents like, you know, months later, she was like, this guy just never ate. He's like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. It's trash disposal. I'm like, no, that was not around me. I was like, well, I was nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But um. Yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just like um, finally, I just I threw onto her. Like you know, I'm always like like with her medications and stuff. I would always like she had like eight bottles of medication, so I would always get like her day and nights and kind of like put them all in that little you know flip open pill box, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you know, I would always you know be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy. And she said after that she knew that I was like that kind of a keeper. Mm -hmm. It's like you know like, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody, right? That's a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go across the block? Come on. Are you with me? I'm like, sure. Why not? Yeah. Like, I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or she's in the bathroom that's all day. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that clear stuff that's not real, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it felt like a great, it was a great relationship. Everything was, everything was great. Now you're talking about with Kissinger? No, with uh, Tom Wilson, Wilson. Yeah. and and um, like in the first the first year, you know, like yeah, you know, my parents never. Oh, well, I don't know. My mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I was I was the baby, I guess. I never, you know, for this, I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of oh. like she never like really saw me like. Oh, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I when I turned eighteen, I graduated. I never moved back. Okay. That, that, that old. So and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> so, so. How old were you when you met Shanann? I was 25. I was 2010. So. Okay. So no serious girlfriends before that? Not Nothing more than like six months or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was, there, was a, there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like, you know. Uh, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann... She was just actually got divorced, and I just should, should never did that. But it, it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm -hmm. she went on somewhere else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy. <laughs> rebound guy, well, pretty much. But you know, not how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted maybe a more dominant personality. It seemed like it because I'm more of the just reserved. I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. And like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed yeah. like. So I get that. I'm saying, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't think that's right with you, but. <laughs> so then, and I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but. And, and one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves. Christ just does not fit the mold. Christ is not. No. Like this, this, it just blows us away what happened. Right. And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth. And that's really just to get to know you a little bit better. And we never really got that chance to be. Um, pretty you much. Know, twice. Yeah. Not you once. Yeah. Probably like three, well, remember three or four times probably. So then with, do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I guess I would call her Nikki. Okay. Hello. There's so many Nikki and Nicole's in this. Right. I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. Like, she'd actually, like, asked me, like, like my opinion on a lot of things. It was, like, what I wanted to do. And just kind of, like, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. It's fascinating to me. And so did it feel more like... An equal partnership, or it seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Or would she say, "I want to go somewhere"? Was it too fast? I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the Orchard, about the 144th mm -hmm. over there, and you know, I asked her like, "Hey, you want to go see this movie?" And like, she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And then we just we got there. It was sold out. I and mean, you know, normally I'm probably just after you know just wait two hours like no just go home but not she just wanted to walk around and just talk I'm like, okay oh wow so that was that was different and you know i think she wanted to go to the car museum 
Shelby Museum in Boulder. I've never been there. And I was, That's right up your alley. It's yeah. Like I was just like, that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so. And then, you know, drag race in Vandermeer. Okay. And I haven't been to a drag race since 2008. And that was Charlotte. Okay. Like that was a great drag strip over there. This like the NHRA, the top fuel mm-hmm. fun car stuff. Like me and my dad used to grow up. Just yeah. Go there like all the time. And then like uh, went to camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park. Mm-hmm. And I had never, I, I never been camping. I always wanted to do it. Thought it was she done it like countless times. Like, oh really? Okay. So, she's outdoorsy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She. She. I guess she. Every time, like she even needed to clear her head, she just go by herself. This is go somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know. But she's a completely new type of uh, person and relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. What were you thinking this whole time? Like, in the back I did, of your head? I, in the back of my head, I was telling myself, "What are you doing?" Like, you know, every time, you know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, like. But my wife and my kids, I'm just like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was on my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself. And, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just, you know, talk to them, you know, say, like, like I have, like, this book. Uh, I used to read for CC. And I remember that book, so I read that to, to them like every night. And like there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so I just try to, you know, just try to think back. Like I wish this never happened. It was just like I wish that blinder went on my head, went in my eyes. That would have seen what was going on. Like, you know, I was having, get, everybody said, oh, you're just out, out there having fun while your kids, you know, or kids and wife are on vacation. I was like, no, I'm just. It wasn't like that, but it seemed like that's what it looked like when you know, we were going, you know, we are going to camping, going to drag race, going all the other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else, it's not your family. It just didn't seem right. Right. You know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I'd be able to see that anymore. Yeah. All there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm. anything. And literally, I didn't. Like, I was only at home from, like, when I got home from work, I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went over to her house. Like, I was never, I never slept in my house, like, the whole month of July. Now, talk me through that, though. When you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while Chanel was gone? Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane, quickly. Like, I didn't, like, she even told me, like, she was never, like, a normal relationship she would never have somebody over at her house like more than like a once or twice a week but she yeah. felt like she wanted me over there yeah she said she felt comfortable over there yeah. so it was like that's what was different like she wanted me over there but then i just wish that all that would just go away i just wish i almost like i i know it's hard to i know it's wrong to say i wish i never met somebody but i wish i you know maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way I think if we had a time machine, mm-hmm. I don't think this would happen again. Sure. Because some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it would have been the next time. It's just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Uh-uh. And it happened so quickly that you tell me if I'm wrong, you're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take control of the situation. It's just like the situation in control of me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that, man. I'm, I'm somewhat passive myself, and it's like, you know, there are situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? No. Yeah. I don't know why. It was like, it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching the ticket on and just never get go. Yeah. Can we talk about the hardest subject? Um, so when we were talking, The last time we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was where the girls were. Mm -hmm. We never really got to talk about that night. What happened? 
So nothing really happened that night. It was in the morning. And it was, you know, me and Jeanette, she got home like at two o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her get in the bed. And like, I just thought like I didn't really dip, dip, but I just to make sure I looked my phone at two o'clock and make sure she's all right. She's in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, I just had a feeling that she knew like what was going on. I mean, obviously I didn't use like a, like an inner a gift card, you know, that I'd gotten and I'd used my actual credit card. And I, I kind of just felt like some, she knew what was going on. And she, uh, she started rubbing her hand on me and we ended up having sex, but, uh, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Oh. Well, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, because when we talked, the uh, when I woke up for later on in the morning, like you know, I I pretty much you know told her like you know I didn't think it was gonna work anymore, and she was like, "What happened? What was last night?" You know, mm -hmm. so I figured that must be the test after I've gone through everything in my head. That makes sense. And she just told me you know like to get off of her. And she was like, I knew some, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else. I couldn't bring it up, I couldn't just say, yes, there is somebody else, but then she said, we're never going to see the kid again, we're never going to see them again, get off me, don't hurt me. And then, is that what she said? That was good, like when I climbed in bed, that was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her, I'm doing Okay. Cause she thought I was going to like, you know, I don't know, hurt her or baby or something. So, cause she, cause she knew that like, you know, I, something had happened. She thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. So, okay. then that's when it happened. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk to the tiny bit deeper about that? So she comes home, um, uh, you know, she touches and you guys have sex. It seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Uh, sounds like you do too. I'm sure like, you know, the gear or something, you have the Colt Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know, that's what I was thinking, right? They talked about her during that whole weekend. More than like that. That's my parents told me there was like a, uh, going through like text messages. It's like all like pretty much, they all kind of just told her he's with somebody else. You know, yeah. And she had spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's what we found, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home, uh, you guys have sex, and then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up or does he wake you up to work? Not a lot of points. Oh, okay. And you're going to work out. Mm -hmm. But then that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. She was pretty mad. Yeah, she, I mean, it was, I, I had already kind of do that, you know, using that credit card, it's kind of, was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I like, you know, I, had, I used to, like, cause I got these anarcho gift cards from like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that. And I'd use them all. Oh, was, well, was part of me just like, yeah, screw it, whatever, I don't care. I'm using this card. I, I was, uh, Part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But right now, this, I don't know. Yeah. Even I think um, when my, my attorney said she even knows I used a different card, like a blue card. Oh, mm -hmm. Maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just to use them on the bank account or something. But, you know, you know, I told her I was going to Iraq. Yeah, I told you. I told you guys. Yeah. I just said, you know, even I, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like, just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like, gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me to, he could like, it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game. You want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? Like, in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, so, just yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I can't, I can't find a babysitter. To Nikki. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes off, maybe it just like goes different direction. 
that was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out this game today. I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann, did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said it to me before. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of hard to hear. Yeah, because she said to me before she went to Arizona. Because, like, I wasn't really sleeping in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slept in the door. I never going to see the kid again. Someone, yeah, it was, did she get fiery like Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her like that way. Yeah. And that was the a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was uh, back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it was just like one of those, it was, it was just a fiery parchment that yeah. I never, like, I never raised my voice to her or anything. And, like, you know, I, like, I just got mad and I slammed the door and she's like, yeah, I'm like, should have slammed the door. Was that when you were in North Carolina that last week? No, it was like, like previous to that. It was like 2010, 2011. Oh. It was like early, early, early. In her old house. Before kids? Yes. Were you dating or were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some, I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something. And like, you know, it was just like, this. And it, she was like, you know. Don't have that happen again, and I'm just like, I think I have friends, right? They're females, like right. I don't even talk to this woman anymore, right? And I was just like, yeah. no. Was she fiery? Did she have that Italian blood that her mom has? Or yes. <laughs> <laughs> was she always like that, or, or was she? Uh, did she snap at things? Uh, it's she would snap at me, but you could tell, like you know, something, something really hurt her a little bit. Yeah, and it would come out zero to hundred type thing, or what? Uh, so, yeah, so you're like, yeah, 200. Oh, interesting. <laughs> she's, like, she's, she gets activated about something. She's like, all right, it's going to happen. <laughs> well, that's why she was probably so successful at Thrive, right? Oh, yeah, like she had done a couple other, like, direct sales business, but this one was just like, it was different. Why? This one, like, uh, I think she had done, like, uh, Origami Owl and, like, something called, like, uh, It Works, and then, like, uh, so other, 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 a couple other things like uh, some bags and stuff like stuff like that. With the supplement stuff, it just because it worked with her and mm -hmm. worked with me. She's like, okay, I can kind of like use this as like, all right, this is what's doing for us. Yeah. And then like after a little while, like she could see how like people are above her, how it was helping them, and then it was just like trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. and it was like a good system about like you know commission wise and everything, and everything was just she could use. All the business IQ she has from running those cell phone shops yeah. and from the uh, dirty south custom shops, all that. I mean, she's she, she business minded. Yeah, she knows how to do accounting book like yeah. in the back of her hand. So, but all just like fell into place with all that. So then on that night, was it just a new type of fight? It was, it was never it was, had or what? What happened? Yeah, it was, Totally different type of flight. It was, you know, it was just felt like I don't know. It was more anger than than anything else. Like there was emotion to it at first, and then it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like you no, know, like like there was no love there. It was kind of like what we were saying, what she was saying. It was just like it's almost like we knew like something was coming at at it at each other. We didn't know like it was it wasn't ourselves really. No. Anger from you or anger from her. I think it was more anger for me and more like desperation from her to, cause she wanted to fix it. Yeah. She knew, she knew if something wasn't right. Like, you know, like when the whole thing with my parents happened with the, somebody, my parents called it Nutgate. Okay. Nutgate. What's that? Bro, you do that? The peanut. Oh, oh yeah. Old, yeah. Old, yeah. Oh, with the, her family? Yeah. yeah. Pistachio ice cream or whatever. Yeah. yeah they, People that that I, I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Yeah. I guess what street work all that. Okay. But uh, that was like another out. Like, you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything with Nikki and just kind of concentrated on helping like whatever happened there. Because yeah. Shan had a story, my mom had a story. Like, you know, whatever happened, I, I probably asked my 10 year old nephew, probably could tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons and they both didn't see it the other person's way. And Yeah. And like, maybe I. Cause I could, I didn't talk to my parents from then on. 
till like August 6th. And like, you know, my dad took that whole week off. You didn't talk to your parents from then on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like my Janelle was like, do not talk to them, do not call them, do not do anything. Is that what she said? Yeah. And uh, the uh, CC's birthday was 17th, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August? July. July. Yeah. And uh, like my, my mom or my dad was going to go. But then there was like a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. She had a bait. And I was like, no, I just can't, can't do it anymore. Just like, because. He, he perceived that as her taking a shot that day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like she always says she never, you know, put those posts uh, directed at anybody. But I, she, she had a method. If you read them, you know who the term yeah. talking about. She had a method to the bad. Mm-hmm. And you can see it. Mm-hmm. But uh, as, I wish I could have just took more time just to fix that. Yeah. Cause like I was like I wanted my parents to be involved. Like since you know like the whole wedding thing, and then up to that, it was like you know my mom, my sister were always like you know, combating with Shan, Shan combating with them. Mm-hmm. My dad was always cool. Like he's just like me. He's just like you know go with the flow. Like I just want everybody to get along type deal. Shakes me. I loved your dad. Oh, he's the best. Isn't he? I so, loved your dad. I'm sorry, keep going. That's um. I just wish I could have. Like, just when we were in, uh, we were at the beach in August, like, my dad was supposed to let's take through the whole week off just so we could see the kids, and, like, uh, see me, and, like, we have a cookout at my sister's house or something. And then, but we just pretty much spent five days at the beach, and she had to, like, book it. So, like, you know, I mean, it's, I don't want to say, like, punishment for them not to see the kids, but, like, I wanted them to see it. Mm-hmm. And see them. You know, just, I wish I could have fixed it all. Fixed all that. And I, I even like when I was at the beach, I told Shanann that it was more like, like what was going on was more of like, I feel like, you know, cause my dad's not here. I feel like I've lost like something in my life. I haven't been talked to him for three weeks. Mm. And I've been seeing see the kids for two weeks, you know, FaceTime or anything. Mm. And I wanted them to be able to have that relationship. And then they, no, she was pretty much gone. Oh, like she tried to kill my daughter by like, giving her. I was like, that's bad. I don't think she gave it to him. But and that was that her stance is that your mom put that put something in front of CC, like to kill her or no? Just to... just like not even care. Like like didn't pay attention. She she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like people think oh like it's made up like, kind of thing. Be fine. He'll just have a rash. He'll be fine. I've seen CC. You know, like the first time we'll. I seen a picture of when he had a cast the first time, and it wasn't good. And then she had a kiwi the second time, and then the same thing happened. And uh, I know it's real. Do you know it's serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, it wasn't like her throat like closed up, but she broke out in this full body rash that looked really I mean, crazy looking. And luckily, like, you know, not, nothing with her throat like happened. But, um. So did that make you angry to, at your mom for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I was just like, well, you just gotta, I told her you, you need to think, you need to, like, you know, pay attention just because another kid can have something doesn't mean another kid can have something because like when we were at that birthday party at jeremy's that sunday you know they had this cake there like bella bella wanted it so bad i'm like can't give it to her because she thinks she can't have it she's like you know okay and all the other kids were like if she, they can't have the cake you know but like i just kind of took them off and gave them some like uh like a uh, one of those frozen pops or something but mm-hmm. you know it's just like she had to learn that just because one kid has something and there's another kid that can't have it for a legitimate reason, like she, you know, she couldn't have done it. But you know, that's the kind of talk I had with her when Shannon called me. I think it was maybe like middle of July or something when she told me all this had happened. Mm-hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while, and then they're just like, you know, they just couldn't like, deal with her anymore. Shannon just kind of like, you know, they like flipped out. My nephew told Bella to go hide behind. The curtain because I don't think your mom was going to let you come over here again or something like that. Oh. So it got eaten. Oh, they were. It was bad. Really? Yeah. They, it was. It was like a last straw between them. I think. Like in the same room or over the phone? No, they were at, at the house. They, they were, and so they were my, really my house. Yeah. Because CC and Bella and my niece and nephew were there. Okay. How did so, Shannon find out about the ice cream thing? Because uh, Shannon was there, and uh, I guess they were all sitting. Uh, one one of those couches, kind of like a U, and my niece went into the kitchen, and she knew where the ice cream was. Um, there. 
So it's not like your mom gave it to her? Like she got her own? Yeah, she went in the freezer, got it, went out, and stopped beside Cece and started eating. So, but like, it's just a matter of like, Cece could go like, right, right, like that. Now, I don't, I don't know what would happen if she just got it on her hand, right? But like, I know on like the prick test you know, mm -hmm. on, her, on the back, it's like a well. Mm -hmm. So were they staying there at your parents' house during that time? Yeah, it was, um, so they would go from my, uh, from Sandy and Frank's house yeah. for like a few days or five days and we'd go to my mom and dad's house right. for a couple of days. A couple of hours back and forth. Okay. So it happened during that time? No, there, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, there were so many things that happened, weren't there? They just were little tiny ingredients to this yeah, recipe. Nothing, yeah, nothing like... That's crazy. I mean, it's just so many things just didn't go your way. Everything was like a, like somebody was stirring a pot and it was just... Yeah. just exactly what it looked like so then i know i keep bringing it up can you walk me through to just the last few minutes before shenanda it was pretty much just like i had gotten dressed for work and then like we started talking did she come to you no i was i'll just right there in bed oh just, okay yeah so i was just like i got my blue shirt on i'm not doing everything you ready to go and... Was she asleep, or did did you have to wake her up to finish your conversation? Or... Uh, wake her up because like she 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 got home like two o'clock, so she was she pretty much out of it. But I never knew like if like if her plane got delayed. So my mom always told me like she just like sat around with Nicole and just like talked for a while and then came home or something. I'm not sure if that oh, was it was, yeah. was delayed. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, when she came home and everything, but yeah, like I I, I woke her up to talk to her. Oh, okay, yeah. And is that because it was just eating at your brain? Yeah, like, I, I knew, like, you know, something, like, it's something that just felt right with me. So, I know, like, she knew. Um, I just, I just knew she knew. I just felt like maybe, like, maybe the kids weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, interesting. Now, um, I don't mean to offend, but I have to ask, is that really the truth? Okay. I really felt like they, were, they weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, and like so, she would take them somewhere? No, I, or? I, just, I just felt like either maybe I wouldn't go home, maybe they weren't going to be there, or I wouldn't be allowed in, I think. I think I saw some text messages where Shanann talked about um, that she would take the kids to another state or something because she couldn't, wouldn't be able to afford to live in Colorado or something. Did she say that kind of stuff to you, or yeah. what did she say about that? She said she couldn't afford to live in Colorado by, on her own. And that, uh, I told her, like, well, you know, right, I mean, she pretty much makes the same amount I do. Yeah. But, uh, as she said, she wouldn't, she wouldn't want to try. Just because, you know, Colorado, just, just the price of living there was a lot higher than North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And just so, just so I'm clear, you thought maybe she was, she, in your mind, you thought maybe she would take the kids somewhere else or, like, lock you out of the house or... Or just, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make a scene, like, you know, trying, like, you know, I don't want the door, trying to get in or anything like that. Mm -hmm. like, I just felt like, you know, that that was... What I did on Sunday, you know, it was kind of like, or Saturday night, it was kind of like the last draw. Kind of like going out with somebody and actually uh, having a account card and just like not trying. I don't think. So walk me through it though, because she comes home, she does to you, you guys have sex, you fall asleep, then you wake up for work, all natural, all, you know, a normal day's work type thing. Yeah. What was it that made you think, I just can't do this anymore, I have to talk to her? I feel eating away at me like I yeah. knew like something like, I knew everything that I did like I know like when I was with Nikki it was you know different like I wasn't even like in the realm of I'm a dad I'm a husband type thing oh and then like like I like I was saying when I'm never at home like sleeping at my own bed and, like I have no like concept of that anymore interesting it so was, in your yeah. mind and heart you can move moved on like it was, it just, it kind of felt like if I wasn't at home, like I didn't think about it almost. Cause like, I, if I wasn't sleeping on my own, but like, I think there was one, at one point, like Nikki had gone to the mountains with her friends for like a few days, like in the June, first part of July. And then like, you know, that part, you know, obviously, obviously I was at home, but like from that whole month of July on, it was like, I was never at home. Like, I never had all those reminders around me. I never had, you know, like, every time my wife called me, I would be at, like, so. Oh, while she was in North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. 
And I would like to know, walk outside and talk to her, like, while I was next to the car or something like that. I would never be at home looking, like, just have all these pictures around me, and just being in the same bed, you know, seeing my kid bed, seeing everything that, you know, that we know for the last six years. And so, did you just want to once and for all get it out in the open? I just wanted to just tell her how I was feeling at that point in time. Like, I didn't feel like me and her were compatible anymore. Yeah. I honestly, I didn't feel like that because what was going on with Nikki, it just, it was new. Yeah. It was new. Right. Absolutely. Anything that's new always feels better than the old. Yes. And you were it, probably it, bitten by the love bug. Yeah. It's it, how it, a lot of Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, I never felt that. I mean, even like with new relationships in the past, like it always felt different, like, you know, the first couple of weeks and then, you know, but it just was someone with Nikki felt different. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like you said, like, you know, I was more in control and like, it was more of like, maybe more of me coming out. Mm -hmm. Kishnan always said, like, it always seemed I was more myself around other people, like, you know, her cousin, Cody, like, you know, like, she, uh, Cody lived, or came up, visited us for a little bit while we were in Colorado for a little while, and Cody always talked about, like, oh, Chris is so funny, Chris is like, Shannon would always, like, why are you never like that with me? I'm just like, oh, well, maybe I always felt nervous about you. There's only so much oxygen in the room, right? I say this to some people, what dominant personalities, you know? I just always felt nervous. I always felt like I was, you know, never could actually just be myself. Right. Nikki, I was myself, like, all the time. It was just different. Well, and it seems as though, and again, it's hard to talk about it, you tell me if I'm wrong, but it also seems, uh, is it accurate to say that sexually you were able to say, Nikki, this is what I would like, this is what I'm into, or blah, 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 and maybe not what you no, Nikki just wanted, I mean, she wanted what she wanted. She wanted to do it pretty much all the time. I was like, okay, that's fine with me. You know, okay. You know, it was like, I'm like, hey, <laughs> sometimes it happens, sometimes it didn't. But uh, that wasn't, that wasn't the case as far as that way. It was just like sex or whatever. But okay. it was mainly, I was just one myself. Like, I, like you know, just not think about what I was going to say or plan what I was going to say or not. You know, say something stupid or something. But, right. A little bit of freedom. Can I ask you something about that morning that you had sex with Shanann? Did you feel at all like maybe you were kind of cheating on Nikki by doing that? I felt strange. I felt like, you know, the first time I was with Nikki, I felt weird. First time, like, sure. and then the last time I was with Shanann, I felt totally strange. I was like, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. I didn't, I felt like I'd become people I see on TV. And that did not feel right with me. Like I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. So I, Nikki even asked me, like, "Are you? Yeah, have you done this before? Have you go straight away?" I'm like, "I've never even thought about it." It's like, "What's what's different?" It's like, I "Guess it's just you that's different." Because I just never actually, like, like I've seen girls smile at me before. Never done anything about it. But her, it was just like. It's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. Mm -hmm. As soon as she walked, I'm like, the "Heck, hell, what's going on?" So, well, and Tammy brings up a very good point. I wonder if that last time with Shanann having sex had a somewhat of a role in you thinking, like a trigger. I, I got to do something. I got to say something. We got to have a talk. Something's got to change. Is that, that accurate? Yeah, I just I felt like it was like maybe like a trigger point or something like like you hit the push button on a, on a bomb and it just blows up. Right. Something in my head was just like something. It's like. Something was hurt, just like I had to say something. Okay. So then, exactly what did you say and what happened? So, when I woke her up, I was like, hey, we just gotta, just gotta talk. Okay. And I just like, I told her, I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is gonna work. I just, you know, I don't wanna, like, can we cancel a trip to Aspen? Because she had booked a trip that week oh. to go to some like, mystery four-star luxury hotel or something mm -hmm. just the two of you or the whole family just me and her okay yeah, she had uh, amanda fair couldn't watch the kids that week that weekend or something okay and uh i was just like can we cancel that can we like do something like but from what i remember i even said can we move to brighton <laughs> just to get away from like this house oh but like i'm not sure if that was like like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot that conversation went so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together 
to not staying together to just like all of the above. Okay. So this is half an hour, an hour or what? Uh, definitely not more than half an hour. Okay. I don't think. Are you crying? Is he crying? It's, it's back and forth. It's like, you know, she's, she's got, you know, mascara. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on still, so mascara is running all over her and stuff like that. And it was and nothing, nothing about that conference. I just wish I could take all of it back. Just be, just the, like, the whole neck thing, like everything. But so then when did it turn? As far as that conversation? Mm -hmm. Just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. That's what happened. What happened? She told me to get off her and then I put my hand on her. Did you say she said something like you were hurting the baby or something? Yeah, that was before that. She could, like when I was straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got off, when we got on the bed, that's just where I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her, mm -hmm. and every time I think about it, I'm just like. Did I know I was going to do that before I got on top? Or... Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you do. It's like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know. Like, like I try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. It's everything just kind of like. Felt like you had to? It just felt like it was, I don't even want to say it, it felt like it had to. It just felt like. There was already something in my mind that I was implanted that I was going to do it, and then I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before? It was just like, I don't want, like, when, like, like, just like in the sentencing hearing that prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes, something like that to happen. Like, why, why couldn't I just let go? I didn't. Oh, I didn't understand. I just like, was it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like, I don't even want to know what, what she saw when she looked back at me, honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? Well, I didn't. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just... Now I read, read the Bible and said, you know, like, you know, uh, heard the scripture that says, don't, uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she was saying that. I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she, you know, like, like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and step check for defensive wounds, and like, you know, there like, wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight me. I don't know like, why. So she didn't grab, could she grab your arms or were her arms pinned down or? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think like I moved toward my knees or, or around her arms or anything. It was just kind of like when I got on top of her, we, we started talking and we said, that was it. And it's kind of like in my head, or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen. And just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I just wish I could have let go. Did it seem like it was that long, two to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? Kind of, I felt like it was felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but it just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from life. not not letting you go. At some point, there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, that's how do you... the only way I can describe it, honestly. Like a snap or something. I, mean, I know, I guess my attorney had said like some, you know, you know, strangulation is more of like a, I don't know, passionate type thing. I'm just like, I don't know how that can be passionate. It's just intimate because you're right in there. Uh, yeah. Using your own hands. It's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. It just felt like somebody was like behind me. Just like. It's, 
Mm -hmm. I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you're just like, maybe felt out of control or maybe felt like, I don't know why I couldn't stick, take a step back or, you know, like even when you said when your buddy was like, let's go to the football game, you wanted to say yes, you just couldn't. Yeah, I wanted to, like I I never been, I haven't been to a football game since North Carolina. So I was just like, yeah, sure. Like, I wanted to say that. Yeah. I wanted to just, just text him. Yeah, yeah, no. I guess it fell through, can't go. So then what? Just um, But just after, you know, Shanann was, I guess, once, it, once that was, once she was gone, it was just like, I, I didn't know what, what was going on. It's like, there was like a traumatic, I don't know what you call it, traumatic event type and everything. And like, I was shaking. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think like, like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say like, why don't you just call 911? Why? It's like, unless you're in that situation, you know, you don't, don't know. We don't know what we would have done. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Like, like I said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they're going through their mind that point in time. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you'd have done. So what happened next? Bella came in. So what happened, Bella came in? What she said? Oh, why? Did she hear something? Is that what she came Obviously, in? I think. Okay. What did you, you tell her? Smiling on the good. Then, did that happen with Bella right in that room? Not wrong room. Yeah. What happened? She was, she walked in as, you know, when she talking about me, she was, she was sleeping. Mm -hmm. Did you take her back to her room? But she had in that sheet and she found sight. Okay. Then what? Carried her downstairs. Back my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. So then she nans in the truck. Then we went back to the house. We got her back in the truck. Was Bella first or was Cece first? And the truck? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So she was first. And then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put it, when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? I woke back up. Okay. It's, it's, I don't really want to talk about this part, honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. It's just about baby. I'm just talking about every night. I don't help us be honest. Every time I see pictures of them, I don't know how it's going to happen. You know, being a dad was the best part of my life. So I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's giving piggyback rides and, you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things. Um, how you get to that point, you know? Um, like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was like to fight back. Yeah. Like when that prosecutor said it, Bella bit her tongue, like repeatedly, I just, I just wanted to bang my head up against the wall. 
So you put Shinyan in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats, or...? Or I guess they didn't probably have car seats uh, in your truck, did they? No, they sitting in the back with the, like, in that, that bench. You... So Shinyan was back there, too? So... on the floor. What did they say about Shinyan being on the floor? Not be okay. What did you tell them? She'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them, with their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had, they had some, they had something with them that they carried. One of them, I think, I think CCMBO had like a blanket or something with them, mm -hmm. like a pink, a pink blanket or. What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? The dog or the dog. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, one of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. Trying to try to it's harder not but like yeah. if they had like big blanket, small blanket. So I think I saw um on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans? Uh, Where did you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I felt like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time about doing all this, honestly. Yeah. You just think about that? What did you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything happened, not the definite thought. Yeah. See, it's interesting to me. And, um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together, and if you were all going to pass together. That to me makes sense, because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? Family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is, um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what's going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I had to do it. Yeah. I it looks like whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself, you know, it's, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. So what made you not do that? You think? I don't know if it was just more of like a... Because with the, with the site, maybe it was just more of like, I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else but i know there's other people out there not like at the site but other people like maybe out in the area like i didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up and, and then other people around would get hurt the same so you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there or an explosion or something or just the, the, no not not for not for that just like maybe i could just Take care of myself. Oh, but at home. When you ask me, that's the only thing you do. I mean, I don't have like I don't have a gun. I don't have anything like that. I like just kind of suicide that way. But it's just like, to blow yourself up. I mean, it was just I wasn't thinking. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, it was. I mean, I don't have I don't have weapons. I don't have. I mean, I've never hunted before in my life. I don't know what. I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah, I remember you kept telling me that. You kept saying. I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy. I didn't know. Like, yeah, when you asked me about remember... the sheet, like, what were you doing? Like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I think you were just, like, in automatic mode, or it seemed like. So did you st drive straight out there? So what were you thinking on the way out there? I was kind of like what I was doing right now. I'm just, like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing, like, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I know, like, my life has completely changed. I don't know, like, what's happening. Like, honestly, like, I try to picture that, that whole ride. Like, it's like 45 minutes to an hour ride out there. And it's just like, 
Couldn't I have, like, saved my girl's life? Couldn't I have done something? Why did I do that? I don't know. Right. Like, this is my flesh and blood. This is, like, what I wanted all my life was to be a dad, just to have, you know, kids and they love me. They, you know, all that. And it just nothing, nothing made sense. Right. Like, the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like, what the doing? Mm-hmm. So what happened when you got out there? I took Shanann out. Just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. And then... What were the girls doing when you were doing that? Just sitting in the back of the truck. And then what happened after that? CC was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No. I put the blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Good brief. I put the blanket over her head. I didn't want to. No. I strangled her right there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? Ten minutes later. Did she understand that she thought it was wild? I'm saying that one. And then the same for Bella? Just without a blanket? With a blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. It's like every time I closed my eyes, I started to see her say, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. I hear that every day. You got it. Sorry, man. Yeah, sorry doesn't hold to take anything back that I did. I know. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you could say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't. You didn't feel like that during I, that? I just didn't. I felt like it was just like an anger with Shanann, with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. I mean, kids growing up, with, growing up without their parents, they, I mean, depending on what grandparents or whatever they, whoever they grew up with seemed to be fine, but it was just like, it was an anchor thing. It was just like. And what were you so angry at Shanian about? Like, if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that. Nothing that makes anybody to want to do this. You could be angry at your spouse like your whole life, but you should never have done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. But I let it get to a point where I never, I mean, I've never been angry before. Like, and this was like the epitome of being angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The epitome of like showing a rage, the epitome of like losing, losing your mind. I mean, even like some people in here said, they're like, the heck happened? It was freaking snapped. And, like, I just walked away. It was like, you know, it's, I don't see it in my mind how it could have, like, you know, I look outside every day, I'm like, what could we be doing right now? Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> right now I'd have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one, might be a one-month-old son. And a beautiful wife. And I'm just like, right now it's just me.
I watched that video of you finding out that Shanann was pregnant. You don't seem excited. You seem like kind of in shock. Yeah, and, yeah like, oh, fuck. Like, well, it's, it's already complicated and now this. Well, it's like, uh, when we had talked about it, like a couple weeks, it happened fat, like, with Bella, it was like, we almost gave up mm -hmm. trying. And then she bought me like a supercharger for my car. And then with CC, it was like, we had to try and try and try. And then finally, but with Liko, it was, you know, once or twice, and then like two players, she's pregnant. Is mm -hmm. that what happened? Huh. Yes. It's just like, it was more of like, Surprise, scared I'm like, wait, what? Like we just, we just we just we just talked about this. <laughs> like, you know? You know, people have brought up the fact like, oh, she she was probably pregnant before, like you guys even talked about it. I'm just like not, not, no. Oh. But like yeah, it was insanely fast. I give it that. Like that's the only reason I ever gave that notion, like even the moment of thought, because it was like faster than any other time that she she'd gotten pregnant. You just didn't seem happy like you know what i mean like yeah, i haven't like i don't remember the video much i know she was wearing like a oops we did it again shirt i think and i was walking out with my cooler or something mm -hmm. and i don't remember like my actual like reaction like watching the video but like i could see i could see her surprise deal like uh didn't seem like he was jumping for joy type thing yeah it didn't seem like that did you watch the one of the uh, when i found out about cc oh no oh, okay totally different yeah it was yeah yeah it was because uh bella was in the crib and it had an eviction notice on the, oh yeah i think you crib. told me about it yeah i never saw it though no. yeah i picked up bella and spun her around and whatnot this time it was just me and shenan and she was in the kitchen i don't know like i don't forget what date it was maybe like june third or fifth or seventh, I'm not sure like what day it was the video, but maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe that was going through my head. Is that the potential timing? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't remember the video, what day the video was, but I knew like I kind of met Nikki around like June 1st. I knew like the, she told me like afterwards. When you say met her, you mean like went on a date with her? No, no, I never went on a date with her until Channel North Carolina. Oh, okay. There's like flirting stuff. Yeah, I mean, there was natural flirting back, back and forth, and I was just like, I just, I knew that, like, with that video timing, I probably just looked like I was like, felt guilty for even talking to my girl at work. Well, you probably did, right? Yeah. Did you guys fight before you and Shanann? I know you talked about like not really raising your voice and stuff. Was there. Cause I want to say, didn't a neighbor talk about them fighting and stuff? Yeah, but that was that was embellished and exaggerated, and he attracted that. Oh, so he ended yeah, up he, doing yeah. them. Did you guys ever fight? Did you ever? No, I mean, have, was there any domestic violence in your house? Like, oh, I never. This is strange to us to even have, from her to you. I mean, yeah, she gets mad when she's pregnant and grabs a knife or no, like smacks the or smacks you around or nothing. No, she never like nothing. Okay. That's what makes all this even more hard to understand. Not to tell what, not from here, too. Yeah. Did she ever belittle you at all? Did you ever feel that way, maybe? Was that? Did, you, did she ever make you feel like she belittled you or you felt belittled by her? I mean, there's always points, like, in, in a marriage where, like, you know, the dominant person, like, you know, takes control of sure. everything. But, like, you now I was, my whole life, I just kind of went with the flow. Like, yeah, I never... I never like put myself in the center of attention. I didn't want to be. Yeah. I just kind of, I just wanted to be in the back row. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, if she did belittle me, I couldn't think of what, think of that exact point in time. She never really felt that way. No, I mean, I, I mean, I always knew I was like, you know, the introvert and she was the, you know, she took control of most situations. Like when people came over, like, you know, I knew what I, my role was yeah like i watch videos of like like cooking you know or she'd make like power balls or you know or like a protein ball or whatever. yeah you just don't seem like you want to be in those videos no. like you feel i feel like you were being forced to be in those videos and correct me if i'm wrong but yeah that's what I, it seemed I, like to me i hated being in videos. I, hated, I mean i did it because for her because right. it was for, for her business and sure stuff, but like it was 
No, I, I didn't. I didn't just be out yeah. for everybody to see. That's why, like, the whole, like, the gender reveal thing, I was just like, hmm. I, I didn't want it to be, like, some live Facebook video. I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I just, I never wanted to be out there. But I know I'm, like... Well, even when she was, we talk about this a lot, Tammy and I, they, even when it was, you know, I think it was Florida on some level or thrive thing. And she's like, here we are. And it's all expenses paid. And I was like, I remember looking at you and thinking like, he is not into this video right now. No, you don't look into any of the videos. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be in here. Yeah. Yeah, I, think um, I, mean, I mean, I remember you talking about like she would even post stuff for you. Like, oh, yeah. you're technically a salesman too of yeah, was, Lavelle of yeah, Thrive. Yeah. Like, she put me underneath her, not like anything, like any of my friends or stuff, like anything I do would help her. Right. So it was just, you know, I would send her pictures. Like, like I'd say, I'd take a picture with your patch. I'm like, okay, send it to her, and then she'd make a post about it. She would, she eventually, she was like, I need to take more control over like your business and stuff. I'm just like, I don't know what to talk about. Right. Like if I want to talk about, talk to somebody at the mall or at the pool or somebody about this, I just stumble all over my words and just like, they'd be like, okay, bye. But no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a salesman. Jesus, she's, she's, I mean, she could sell everything you're wearing back to you. Right. <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it. Like, wait, I just paid. <laughs> right. I paid, right. I paid 20 bucks for it. Yeah. yeah, it's those videos were not me. I just I did it just, just to support her. You know, like she would always say, "Oh, could hey. you tell her no? Could you say I don't want to be in that video, or was that an option?" Probably not an option. I mean, it's like you know, she would have been like, oh, "What is this to you know help our family? This is for you know to help this and that." You know? So I could have told her no. I mean, they would just they would have made her mad. I would like no. I would I wouldn't. Really, start that it's because it's for the business it's for the family you know i was just gonna try to help out wherever we can right did that actually make money mm -hmm. so not only just more sales but it actually put money in your guys pocket mm -hmm. and she made probably probably in that last year probably as much as i did on commission basically i mean i know that's a simplified version of it but yep i mean it's uh and they don't take taxes out on it so yeah. right so that, that was like the good thing, and they paid for your car. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, did they give you an allowance for an allowance or something mm -hmm. to buy a car? Yeah, once you lease it, if you're a certain level, like a 12k or above, they give you a car allowance once a month. Huh. I'm not sure how they how they made money. The owners doing that, but they did. Yeah, unless there's just like an insane markup on the product, which I'm well, guess there is. Probably that's it. I'm not sure how much what it costs them to make it. Yeah. Did you feel like a different person wearing those patches? Especially like the the duo, the burn. I mean, it felt. I mean, like the Apple watches. Like if you look on it, like when it tells you to exercise, it tells us exercise like all day. Just my heart rate was like, oh, oh, just from those patches. Was it full of caffeine or what? Uh, they just have something. They had something. You know? I mean, I had the black label ones, the the longer black ones. They, those had caffeine in them, but it never had that effect. I mean, the duo burn ones, the ones that are more of like the fat loss type, it was, I could, it felt like I was working out all day. Even though I was. Oh, we tired? I mean, I know at some points, I, I mean, even Nikki said that, like, you no, know, I'd fall asleep on the couch, oh. on her couch while I was talking to her, and then, like, pick back up like I was, like, I never knew I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if it's like some insomnia thing or what, but like I was, huh. I wasn't sleeping. You yeah. had a lot going on then. Yeah. Yeah, but those are the only patches I really felt like a um, real big difference on just because it felt like, felt like I was working out all day. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like they changed your personality or anything like that though? Or do you? I don't, I don't really know. I know I just, I just felt different on those than any other patch. It was, but like I did just go longer and longer each day, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure like if that was probably, that was probably a bad thing. I, I don't think I was probably staying more three hours a night. So would you stay at when Shan was gone? Would you stay with Nikki and then go home for like to get ready? What? Yeah, I just wake up at like four, four thirty, 
go home and get ready for work and leave. And then just work out when I got back home. Mm -hmm.